Hi everybody, my name is Drew and this is the Just a Guy Linux uh, channel on YouTube and wanted to thank all of you who have given me such kind feedback in the last few videos that I've done. It's been a couple weeks and I've taken some time to kind of figure out where I want to go and some of the topics that I want to cover and um, it's only been until today where I kind of decided, you know what, um, this is where I need to start. So I was going through my Reddit post today and the question was um, the different releases of Debian and which is best for you, okay? For most part, I am a big believer in stable. You know, that's the one video I've already done in how to install stable uh, edition of Debian, um, but there's a lot of you who are um, interested in testing because it's more current. Um, as of right now, Stable is only, I don't know, a few months old, so it's still relatively current. But testing is definitely more of a, um, uh, I wouldn't say rolling distro, okay? That, that's a dangerous thing to say, but um, it's definitely leaning towards that. And then there's Unstable. What's the difference between testing and Unstable? usually about seven to ten days or so. So basically what um, what testing is, is staging for the next release of Debian. So, you know, testing is what Debian 12 will become. And unstable is really, if you look at it, this is generally uh, a distribution run by developers and those who like to live on the edge. I'm not going to tell you how to install that. If you want to do that, then that's fine. Now testing, I have watched some videos on installing testing, and I think that there's a little bit of a non-consensus when doing this. I would start off with the stable branch and then go to testing. So what we're gonna do is the first video on how to actually get and install an ISO on a USB stick, and then we're gonna go from there. Because I know that there are some um, possibly there's some Windows users that want to kind of like uh, try to kind of go into something stable like Debian. There's things like Linux Mint and in particular Linux Mint Debian Edition which I think is fantastic and Ubuntu but if you want to start with the you know the granddaddy you start off with you know with Debian okay. So let's go over here and I'll have this link Oh, this is not really where I wanted to start. Okay. And this is where I want to start. Okay. So this is where I would start, and this is going to be the link that's going to be in the uh, description below. And this is the one, This if I go to 11.3 plus non-free for firmware, and I go to the AMD64 ISO CD, this is the this is the ISO that I would use to install on my USB drive, USB stick, to do the installation. Actually, this one, this top one, firmware 11.3, not the EDU version, but just the first version that you see. Okay. It's 472 uh, megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and click on that just so it downloads in the background and hit save. Okay. And so let's talk a little bit more about some of these other things, all right? Because there's a lot of ISOs on the Debian website. Which one do you pick is, is challenging, okay? When you go to this live version, okay, you're going to see that there are lots of versions with the um, desktop environment in included in the ISO. So here is kind of like what GNOME, because um, that's kind of the, the default, uh, dist, uh, what Debian default installs is GNOME, uh, but there are other things like Mate and XFCE. Uh, notice this file size here, okay? Even XFCE is 3.1 gigs which is strange to me because if, I don't know if you saw, but the download for um, just the base install of Debian Stable is like 472 megabytes, 
Okay, so relatively, you know, what is that? I don't even know. 12% of this. So it's going to go a lot quicker. And then you can start adding other packages, which is what I think we're going to do in a series of installations. Okay. So let's also go over and look at these daily builds, weekly builds. Okay. Daily build, I think, would be more. Let me even see. Yes, yeah, Sid. Okay. Again, these are more for developers. Don't go through this. <laughs> okay. Um, this would be the testing. Uh, sorry, not testing. This would be the unstable version. Okay. Weekly builds would be the testing version. Okay. And so if I go here and ISO CD, this would be the testing version, this bottom one here. It's 609 uh, megabytes. And again, this is not the one I would use. Again, I would use the stable version, and that's what we're going to do. But what I want to do is um, I want to talk about Etcher. So let's say you're, in the win you're a Windows user, okay? And you don't know how to install an ISO. It's fine. You can go to this, go to the Etcher for Windows, and use this to install. I can't really show you how to do that, but I'm sure that you can figure it out. I think it's just an exe file, if I'm not mistaken. So you would just click on the exe file and install Etcher uh, to do this. But what I will do is go ahead and uh, download this and save it. Okay. Now you're going to, again, with an exe file on Windows, you're fine. But I'm going to go ahead and close this, open up my file manager, and I'm going to the downloads directory, and there are two files. There's the ISO that I want to use and the etcher. Um, so I'm going to, actually, I need to do this. I don't have a, a uh, an archive software, so I have to actually go to... Um, downloads and unzip this Bolena etcher and there's the image okay let's make sure that properties and the permissions is allow this to run as a program okay and that's good so I want to execute and so this again if you're in Windows this is what you would do you would go and you would select this then select the target. I've already have Debian on this, so that's why it says that, but this would be a USB stick that you put in your machine. All right, select, and then hit flash. Okay, now it's gonna, it's asking me for uh, super user privileges, and if you're doing this in Windows, you don't have to do that, but if you are doing this in Linux, uh, don't be, you know, it, it kind of hit itself behind but it might only be because I'm using a tiling window manager, i3. So I'm going to hit that. And there it goes. It's flashing to the USB drive. Now, um, Etcher is an Electron app. And you don't have to install this, especially if you are a Linux user. And most of you are going to know this anyway, right? So what I want to do is, as soon as this is over, and it's done, I'm going to show you how to do this in command line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head and clear. And there it goes. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Control C. And I'm going to sudo I'm going to go let me go ahead and just go ahead and close this so sudo dd I mean actually let me back this up for a second lsblk all right notice here that the 32 gig drive is on sdb okay is sdb so that's what we need to know all right sudo dd if equals all right it's the firmware.iso image 
and we want that's IF for input file and o OF for output dev SDB okay status I know this is for you that are you know um, that like to use graphic user you know the etcher is awesome but I'm gonna do BS equals 4m for block size and then O flag equals sync and when I hit that it's gonna ask me to authenticate and it's gonna it's gonna do exactly the same thing that etcher did but it's gonna probably do it a little bit quicker and that's it okay so that's the first step so that's how you install an ISO image onto a USB stick and that's where we're gonna stop it for right now okay thanks